Okay, so we're on to like these religious questions. We're talking about God, talk about prayer. Next one up is angels. So I don't know what an expert in angels is called, but <laughs> I know you're not an expert. That would not be me. Angels, but let's 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 talk about it because I think people are interested in spiritual things mm-hmm. and they're wondering. How about if I just like pray to the angels or could I just engage with the angels? They seem like a softer landing Mm. than dealing with almighty God. Yeah. Um, Well, I think the Bible tells us that there are these spiritual beings, spiritual forces we don't always see, but they are influencing us. They are um, interacting with us. And when it comes to angels, so these would be... I guess you would say spiritual beings of goodness or of light. They're, they're God's angels. And they, they appear in the Bible in two different ways. The one way is that they show up and they're so amazing and powerful that people just end up flat on their face in front of them. They're kind of scary because they're just so amazing. And they are coming with a really specific message for a specific person at a specific time. And that's what they're doing. And that's, so the conversations seem kind of short when an angel shows up that way, Mm. not very long. Um, There's not a sense of an ongoing conversation. The other way they show up is we don't actually recognize them. They, They appear as another person and they move among us unnoticed. And, and we don't even know if we're having a conversation with them. And so, that that's how we see people interacting with angels in the Bible. What we do see people or who we see people interacting with is God. Mm. That's who we are invited to pray to, invited to talk to. And I was kind of thinking, going back to the image that you shared, I mean, it's like a parent who has a child. God is like a parent and we are like his, his children. And what parent would want their child to, you know, talk to someone else to talk to them like we they he wants this direct relationship with us and so praying is best directed toward god i think the other thing that we find in the bible too is just a little bit of a caution is that the the not nice spiritual beings the dark ones um sometimes we use the word demons they love to pretend to be angels of light. And so if we're interacting with a being that has a really high interest in having an ongoing conversation with us, that's probably a sign that it's actually not um, one of the good ones, but it's one that's out to deceive us and ultimately um, kind of wreck our lives. There's a lot there, right? And I think people are looking for some kind of connection with the supernatural, Mm. with the spiritual. And you see these signs show up for mystics and palm readings and tarot cards and all those sorts of things. And I've dealt with people, you know, crushed parents who've lost a loved one, lost a Mm. little one, lost a teenager. And they go to somebody who's going to tell them what the other person's saying. And it's crazy accurate. Like, I know that my jacket's there and I know that you wore my sweater and all those sorts of things. And these... These demonic presences can actually tell things while they're posing to be the dead person mm-hmm. or posing to be something else. And inadvertently, people open themselves up to things that yeah. we would just like, hey, that's not the place for you. And this this will, um, this doesn't go to good places. Yeah. So, but we acknowledge in our day and age, there's sort of this like science and none of these things exist angels, demons. Um, and then there's also this other reaction to like, I'm open to everything. Yeah. And that's, that's a scarier proposition to have, have everything open and available.